happy to have just a few moments of your time today because I really want to get to know the backstory. We've all seen you in front of camera, traveling the world. I want to get to know the real Tapella. When did you first know you wanted to become an actor? I grew up in a small town, in, um, in a farm town called Ladysmith. You know, I'm raised by a very, very strong and strict mother. Um, and all I remember is she always made sure that everything we needed was inside the house. So she got us the VHS, it was VHS at the time. She would buy us DVDs and hire us films. And that was our form of escapism. Whatever we saw on TV, we mimicked. My brothers and I, we used to put together our own plays in the house. We used to invite our friends to come to our house. Performance has always been there in my family from singing to acting to dancing in that house. We had a little studio in that home. <laughs> so there wasn't any ever surprise with the family when you said, I'm switching from accounting, I'm moving into acting. It was quite natural. Well, for me it was, but for my parents, no. <laughs> they were like, you crazy, you coming back home. Um, around that same time, I got a lead role in a Sprite commercial and the entire game changed, you know. I remember them saying, well, why don't you give it a shot then? You know, we'll try to support you. And since that moment, you've been kind of building your career out from there. So beyond just acting, there's entrepreneurship, yeah. but there's also projects that you've launched that have brought cinema and, and movie watching to communities where that didn't happen before, yeah. and in different ways. Tell me about that. Here I am as a filmmaker, in, in an African filmmaker, in a country that doesn't have a profitable African film industry. So I decided to then form a mobile cinema that takes African cinema to the majority of our citizens in townships and rural areas where there aren't any cinemas. Because otherwise, what's the point of making an African story that is targeted to a majority of our citizens but ends up sitting in Santin or Rosebank? And Obviously, I think you're someone who collaborates a lot and chooses those projects that you do kind of very, very carefully and with a lot of intention yeah. um, and a lot of focus behind them. What does a collaboration like yours now with Tabak allow you to be able to do that's different from what you may, you may have done in the past? It allows me to be me. I struggle to sell something that I don't really believe in. I, I'm not good at hard selling anything. So what the Tabak journey allows me to be is myself. You know, um, it's, 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 it's such a, an important partnership because you have a brand that says we identify with you um, and we think you fit our brand. We just want you to stay you, just carry on living, but just carry this brand on your back with you. And then I looked at the campaign that they had put together for the brand introducing it for the first time in a big way to the African market. And I was like, you know, you could easily go with one of the two bigger brands, you know, um, or you could start a relationship with a strong brand, with a, with, with a brand that has a good history, a long history, consistency, and have an opportunity to introduce it for the first time to the African market. And I think that's, that's organic.